hands, let's stand and worship.
As we enter a time of communion together as a church family, we want to make sure you have one of these cups. You can remain standing. I want to read, I want to continue this, entering into the throne room of God. And I just feel led to, to read the words of the Apostle John in Revelation 4. 
And at once I was in the spirit and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. And he who sat there had the appearance of Jasper and Carnelian and around the throne was a rainbow that had the appearance of emerald. And around the throne were 24 thrones and seated on the thrones were 24 elders clothed in white garments with golden crowns on their heads. And from the throne came flashes of lightning and rumbling and peals of thunder. And before the throne were burning seven torches of fire with which seven spirits of God which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne, there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And around the throne, on each side of the throne, were four living creatures full of eyes in front and behind. And the first living creature like a lion, the second living creature like an ox, the third living creature like the face of a man, the fourth living creature like an eagle in flight. And... The four living creatures, each of them with six wings and full of eyes all around and within and day and night, they never cease to say, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Let's pray, church. Oh, Jesus, thank you. Thank you for demonstrating your love for us while we were still sinners. You died for us. You love us and you are holy and magnificent and we are invited in because you, you made a way. You tore the curtain. You allowed us in. You invited us and you said, I want you. And as a result of that, we get to be with you forever. We get forgiveness of sin. And when we say when we confess our sin and we, you are faithful and just and you will forgive us and cleanse us, purify us from all unrighteousness. So we continue to worship you. Amen. Before he spoke creation, the God of heaven knew our names. Formed in his reflection, we are his glory on display. the cross he proved he's on our side we are the sons we are the daughters of God no matter where we go we're close to the Father's heart and though we stumble he will not let us fall
daughters of God. So you can take out your communion cup that you've received, turn it over, and on the bottom is the bread. This bed represents the body that was broken for us. Let's eat together. Open up the top. This represents the blood that Jesus paid for the forgiveness of our sins. Let's drink in remembrance of that together. Let's pray together, church. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for dying on the cross for us, taking upon our sins, defeating death once and for all, and inviting us to be forgiven, inviting us to call you Lord, inviting us into a relationship with you for eternity. Lord, I pray for every single person here. I pray that they would find healing and hope in you. Pray for healing for physical, emotional, spiritual, mental. Whatever that healing is, Lord, I pray that you'd, you'd heal. 
that everyone here would be encouraged, find hope in you, and be able to give hope to others because of the hope that we've received in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. morning. So glad you're here to worship with us today. Uh, there's a lot going on. If you came in, you probably saw lots going on, right? Um, we are doing Feed Portage County, uh, and so lots of food coming in. And uh, thank you for all those that are, that are contributing to that and being a part of that food drive. Uh, and then also, uh, Jed's going to talk about it later, but today's Serve Sunday. It's going to be like one of two Sundays uh, before the summer kind of really gets going that we're inviting you to learn and to see where it is that you might connect. Uh, and then we're also doing a Discover Woodlands for those who are kind of new and wanting to learn more about Woodlands. Here's kind of the big overarching thing. We kind of want to make it a little bit hard for you just to come and sit. We want you to get involved and be a part of this body and use your gifts and talents for his purposes. It, I kind of have this idea, and I think maybe you probably share the same thing, that the church is not just the gathering where we come together, right? But the church is what we do together. The church is the community that we have with one another and the mission we share to go and make disciples of all nations, baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And we want to invite you, in whatever way that is, to use your time, talents, and resources for kingdom purposes. So if you're not yet into that kind of a, a mode, if you haven't had a chance to find that place where you're serving, this might be one of those moments. We're going to have Serve Sunday for two Sundays, this Sunday and next Sunday. And um, maybe just ask the Lord, like, God, where would you want me to serve? How do you want me to use my time, talents, and resources, the gifts that you've given me? for kingdom purposes. Um, so that's what's going on the last for this Sunday. It's a busy Sunday around here. I like busy Sundays. They're fun. Um, and we're jumping into this series called Living Upright in an Upside Down World. We talked about Daniel. Daniel was a, an exile that came from uh, Judah, and he's now in Babylon. And he already went through one trial where he wouldn't eat the king's food. But then last week we talked about the king's dream. Nebuchadnezzar has a dream. And Daniel um, is given the answer to that dream by God himself. And He's kind of had a pretty good go of it. We're going to take a break from Daniel. And we're going to learn about three guys, Shadrach and... You all know this story? This is a story, like, this is a story we all kind of, like, learn a little bit as kids. And if you were a kid, you learned about Shadrach and Abednego. Uh, one girl came up to me in this last service. She says, I always learned it as Shadrach and a billy goat. <laughs> that was kind of fun. So now, now y'all will be messed up. You'll think of Shadrach and a billy goat. Um, Shadrach and Abednego. Or if you were educated by vegetables as a kid, it's what? Rack Shack and Benny. Uh, so just to get ourselves in the mindset, watch this. Thank you for attending today's festivities. It is with great pleasure that I present to you the object of our affection, your new best friend, the Bunny. Now it is time to bow and sing the Bunny song. Hey, boss, those three guys don't look like they're bowing. Hmm? Aren't those our new junior executives? I think so. Maybe they're stuck. Let's find out. I said it's time to sing the bunny song. Come on, guys. Sing the song. Some of you are like, does he have to preach? <laughs> I just want to watch VeggieTales. Uh, if, you, uh, if you want, you can watch it later. You can go find it online. It's really great. It'll, it'll, you'll have fun with it. Um, this story is a story we, we tell at a very young age to, to our kids. And many of you know about Shadrach, Neshach, and Abednego and the fiery furnace. And one of the things I love about this story, and I think is why it's told and retold and 
is that there's so many different truths we can draw from this story. And if I were to have the opportunity to preach this four times, I think you could probably pull out four different types of sermons. This is a really neat passage in a story. And I was even thinking about this driving in this morning that, um, driving in, I live three minutes away. I was, <laughs> I was just driving, I was, I was like, you know, like, this is a story of these men who stood fast and it's told for the next 2,000 years their story, or more really. And it's just really, really a neat story, which is why we tell it. But this morning, I want us to just kind of learn and tease out some new things if we can, to get into God's Word and to study it and, uh, and just uh, dig into the richness of God's Word. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for our time this morning this, as we study, as we learn about not just the, the faithfulness of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but really your faithfulness to them. They, they would not and will not worship other gods, but you also walk with them. And um, just even as we just got done singing, when the lies speak louder than the truth, remind us that we belong to you. And when we can't see past the dark and night of the night, remind us that you're by our side. That you see your faithfulness throughout this story and that you are a good and faithful God. So this morning as we study, I pray that you would teach us and mold us, convict us where we need conviction, encourage us where we need encouragement. In your precious and holy name, amen. Let's jump into uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 1. Kind of sets up a little bit about what's going on with uh, the story about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 60 cubits high, in six cubits wide, and he set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. 60 cubits high, 60 cubits, six cubits wide. It's about 90 feet tall, so it's really a huge thing, and it's, it's a monument of gold, likely not solid gold, probably like gold um, encrusted or whatever. It's a huge feat. It's kind of like almost a wonder that people would come and see. This is a massive statue. Now, we're going to get to see, you know, why did he do this? And because Nebuchadnezzar is very early in his kingdom, so he's likely trying to build unity in this kingdom that has a lot of different languages and cultures. Look at verse 4. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, nations and people of every language, this is what you are commanded to do. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Nebuchadnezzar with his new kingdom, is likely trying to create unity from different people. He's using threats and this, uh, this group project to try and get everybody to bow down. Now, what we know about Daniel and then what we learned about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is that they serve the one true God. And so here's what happens in verse 7. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound in the horn of the horn, the flute, the lyre, the lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the nations, people of every tongue, every language fell down and worshiped the image that the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. King Nebuchadnezzar is getting what he wants. He wants the unity. He wants them all to be doing the same thing. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego do not. Here's how they're found out. Verse 8. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. The first point I want to bring out, and it's one that's a little bit maybe not as obvious, is a warning for us. It's a warning against slander. We got to be cautious about this. Daniel, I'm sorry, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are denounced. In the, in the NIV, that's how it's translated. If in the ESV, it's actually translated maliciously maligned. 
It's, a, it's actually a word that's not used very often. It's, it's, it means something. There's a picture in the Hebrew around this word that's translated announced or maliciously maligned. It's later used very much in terms of the word slander. And the term is a picture. It means to tear something apart and devour it. That slander is tearing somebody apart and just devouring the pieces that are torn apart. If you've ever been slandered, you know that that's actually a pretty good picture, isn't it? If you've ever had your character destroyed or people talk about you behind your back, whether it's gossip or just whatever it might be, you can see that it was just, it's the tearing and the ripping apart, and then it says it devours them. It's a pretty stark picture, isn't it? You know, slander is one of those things that we, we see throughout our culture, but we kind of don't understand how big of a deal slander can actually be to the other person. Has anybody ever been slandered? It's what it feels like, doesn't it? It feels like you've been ripped apart and someone is devouring the pieces. In the Bible, there's this warning against slander over and over and over. In fact, when we get to Daniel 6, Daniel's got the, his own people that slander him, and they actually, the slanderers actually end up going in the lion's den, if you remember. But here, I believe there's another warning. There's a warning about slander for us, and it's in Scripture replete all over the place. I want to read a few of you just to for a few of you just to kind of get it into your heads. First uh, Peter two one it says therefore rid yourself get rid of it rid yourself of all malice all deceit all hypocrisy envies and slander of every kind slander of what kind every kind so is there any good slander yes or no no there's no good slander towards anyone right that's what it says okay because that tears down and it destroys. It actually hurts the slanderer as much as it hurts those who slander. But like newborn babes, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. Look at Ephesians 4.31. It kind of does the same sort of a thing. It says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, and slander along with every form of malice. Any slander is a form of malice. And it says instead, it's kind of this contrast. It says, be kind, compassionate to one another, forgiving of each other, just as Christ forgave you. Have these, these two comparisons of, of malice. And get, it says, get rid of it. Like, don't let it even have a place in your life. But instead, look for kindness and compassion. Proverbs, which was written by Solomon, which was the wisest man uh, on earth, he writes this in, a, in Proverbs 26. He says, For lack of wood, the fire goes out, and where there is whisperers, quarreling, there are no whispers, quarreling ceases. When there's nobody whispering to create more quarrels, it ceases. As charcoal to embers, and wood to fire, so is a quarrelsome man for kindling strife. The words of the whisperer are like morsels, delicious morsels, and they go down into the inner parts of the body. There's this huge warning in scripture about slander. Psalms 141.3, it, it, this is a great prayer, maybe a prayer we ought to wake up with in the morning. It says, set a guard, set a guard around my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the doors of my lips. See, the Bible has this huge warning against slander that we ought to be very, very cautious. Not, well, not just cautious. We ought to rid ourselves of all slander. In this, in this passage where it talks about he denounced the Jews, it's just a little understated in the translation, isn't it? The, pe the tearing off and the eating of the pieces of a person is a much better description of what slander really looks like. So I want to caution us against slander. I'm going to step on some toes. Like I said, has anybody been slandered? If you're a Bears fan, you have been slandered. <laughs> you have. And even though there might be some justification... 
We know what it's like to be slandered. Here's another thing. When we practice something, we get really good at it. That's kind of an obvious thing, right? If you practice something, maybe it's a sport, maybe it's your, your field, your craft, you get really good at it. When I was a kid, I used to eat oranges. And my, I remember a Saturday morning cartoons was watching um, uh, G.I. Joe and eating oranges. And so I would, I would peel the oranges. And as a kid, I would practice. It became a game where how could I peel this orange so it just came out in one piece, right? So you just do it. And you, you, I practiced it over and over. And I got to where that's how I peel oranges. They come out in one piece. And I practiced it. I, it's, it's, I became really good at it. So now today, when I peel an orange, I don't even really think about it. I just peel it the same way because I practiced it over and over and over and over. That's what practice is. It becomes almost second nature if you practice something over and over. And I want us to be very cautious when we talk about slander to be careful about what you practice. I was with some other senior pastors not too long ago, and there are a couple questions that, we came, that came up, and there are two things, I won't tell you one of them, but the number one thing that they were interested in talking about with each other was how are you going to navigate through a political season like we had last time, and that one's coming up. Do you know we're having an election coming up? So we have this election coming up, and, and habitually, not habitually, but predictably, this is a time where slander is rampant, frankly. And we might find somebody who is a candidate one way or the other, and we choose to slander that person. And the problem with that is, and here's what I want to caution you on this, you're practicing something. You're practicing something one way or another. The Bible says to rid ourselves of slander. Be careful, careful, careful what you practice, because what you practice, you get really good at. And if we get really good at slander, what happens when we don't have that to slander anymore? We'll find somebody else to slander because that's what we're good at. You get my point? There's a warning here against slander. Be careful. Set a guard over your mouth. Let the Lord keep watch over your lips. There's my soapbox. I'm going to jump off it real quick and jump into the passage. Go to Daniel 3.13 and kind of continue. Uh, they're, they're slandered and they're maliciously aligned. And so they go and they tell Nebuchadnezzar about these uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that are not going to follow what the king said. And so in verse 13, we see the response. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up. Now, when the king says now, that I'm sure that was kind of like a now, the look, you know, the parent look, now. When you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, if you're ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you will be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? You see, he's forcing them to worship a false God. The second point I want us to walk away from is to guard your worship. Guard your worship. And I, I'm using the word guard intentionally. Nebuchadnezzar is using some tactics to force people or to, to make people worship something else. He's using coercion. I'm going to burn you up. That's, that's a tactic. He's using groups of people. So he's, everybody's doing it, just like the carrot said, right? Everybody's doing it. He's using that tactic. He's, he could even be using the tactic of, hey, we're trying to create unity around here. So just do like everyone else is doing. See, he's using tactics. And the reason I want to say guard is there are many, many times that the tactics of this world are trying to cause you and trying to draw worship away from the one true God. The tactics of this world are copious and many. There are many ways the world is trying to take away worship. 
And when I talk about worship, I'm not talking about the songs we sing or what we're even just doing in this room, which is worship. When I talk about worship, it's what is, who or what is, the, is standing or sitting at the throne of your life? Who or what is the number one priority in your life? The, the thing that everything circles around, something is on that throne. And when the Bible talks about idolatry, idolatry is those things that are not God that are on that throne. This is false worship in the Old Testament. So what are you and I, what is, are there things that we've put on that throne that aren't meant to be there? And when we guard against something, we're guarding because there's a tactic that they're gonna use, that the world uses to get us to turn over our worship to other people or other things. I was just thinking about a little bit of this and um, you know, we use the word everyone's doing it, but there's a truth to it, even as adults. We, we talk to our kids and we say, well, if everyone was gonna jump off a cliff, would you jump off a cliff? I remember the first time I used that as a parent and I thought I'd become my dad. <laughs> you see, it's still true as adults, isn't it? You can look and you can see how other people are behaving and you can just fall into that. The fear of not being a part of something is real, even as adults. The fear of missing out is real. And it's easy for that fear to become the idol, become the thing in which we worship. We worship the tactics the enemy uses is even the pumping of our ego to put ourselves as the center of our world. Ego and power, money and career, all of these things can be idols in our life and, and we ought to guard our worship. Understand the tactics that work for you that work against you. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have to face the king. And in verse 16, they give their reply. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego reply to him. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. They're not going to argue about it. They're like, yep, caught us. We are not bowing down to your gold thingy. By the way, the Bible doesn't actually say what the statue is, so I think it's reasonable that we can go with the, the bunny, right? How many of you, just real quick, I'm just really curious. I didn't ask this in the first service. How many of you, when he said the bunny song, knew what he was talking about? You know the bunny song. That's great. How many of you can quote in the Bible? Just kidding. We learn things. Uh, the bunny, the bunny. Shadrach, and Mish Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they, they stand up to Nebuchadnezzar, but they don't stand alone. The third point I want to leave you with is that we have to stand with friends. You were not designed to stand against the current of this culture and to live upright in an upside down world by yourself. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego have one another and they can stand up together. Even love how it's responded. They don't respond individually. They respond as a we. They respond as a group. If you want to be able to stand upright in an upside down world, you need one another. We need each other. Solomon in Ecclesiastes 4.9, he puts it this way. He says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. Either of, if either of them falls, falls down, one can help the, the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Also, if two lie down together, uh, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. I love that line, a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. I kind of even wonder if Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as they're standing in front of Nebuchadnezzar, they're thinking about themselves as a cord of three strands together, trying to stand strong in what they would probably look at, which is certain death. But a cord of three, three strands is not quickly broken. 
uh, kind of a, a, a preaching secret. Sometimes uh, we go, I go on rabbit trails and I'm trying to understand scripture. And so I started Googling and learning uh, about ropes. Anybody study rope science? Anybody? Super interesting. Like why, like this, this phrase, why, does three, why are three strands together? What, how come that is not easily broken? And it's really interesting because when they're, when they're kind of twisted together, they pull, when you pull them, they come in closer together and they increase the tensile strength of the rope. Their closeness in, in strain actually makes it stronger than it was before. In fact, by keeping them, keeping them together, they keep each other in line so that neither one of the cords is stretched beyond the fibers will allow. And so the rope itself, by being together and twisted, makes a really strong bond where they can hold and withstand way more than they could individually. You could take a cord and make them separate, tied to the same thing, and they would break. But if they're together and twisted together and they are involved with one another, they actually will hold up way better and will likely not break. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. Now, some of us are trying to walk out through this, through this life without this community, these cords that are together. And you will easily break to the stresses of this world. You're, you're missing out on a community that will help you stand strong. It's not a mistake that these guys did this together. We have to stand with friends. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. If you're not connected in community, I want to encourage you to do that. Find it. At Woodlands, we have a lot of different opportunities, depending on where you are in life, depending on what's going on in your life. We want you to connect in a community. Even our children's ministries and our student ministries are designed around small groups so that you can have community and our kids can have community so that they're not easily broken. Find community. Don't do this on your own. The fourth point. Look at how they respond. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it and he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. Next point I want you to hear is that you need to trust God, not your feelings. I don't know about you, but my feelings tend to change and shift. But God does not change or shift. They look at their God, the God that saved them from uh, in, in Daniel 1. They look at the God who has been walking with them throughout their exile, and they say, I'm not going to abandon that God. He's the one true God. Even though they might be fearful, even though they're looking at burning up. That seems unpleasant. They are faithfully saying, and even if, there's no way. Even if. Last point, Daniel 3, 22. This doesn't make King Nebuchadnezzar happy. So the, king commanded, the king's command was so urgent that the furnace, and the furnace was so hot that the flames and the fire killed the soldiers who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. This is so hot, people are dying, just throwing them in there. So King Nebuchadnezzar's looking in, and he sees this. King Nebuchadnezzar leaps to his feet. In amazement, he asked his advisors, weren't there three men? Weren't there three men that I put into the flames? And they replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound and unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods. They're not alone, are they? I love this part of the story. In the fire, there's Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and there's another one, isn't there? Now, of course, you could argue who this is as an angel. I believe this is God himself. 
in the fire. God is with them. They are not alone. Some of you might be going through fires. You might be going through all sorts of things. And you need to see that God has not left you there to be alone. I was even thinking about this moment in Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's life. If, if they were to kind of talk about the greatest moments in their life, you would not expect, you know what was that awesome moment was when uh, we got thrown into the furnace. That was the best moment of our lives, right? But you know what? It is. This is their best moment. This is the moment in all of their life, you wouldn't have predicted it, but this is the moment where they would say, this is the moment that we were the closest, that we felt the presence of the almighty God more than any other moment. It was actually in the furnace when we get thrown in, when God's presence was so known to us. Does that seem like the best moment or the worst moment now? To be in the presence of God in this moment is a beautiful thing. They're not alone. And if you're going through something right now, if you're in the fire of some sort, it's, not, it's really hard to see God in the moment. It's really hard to see him in the fire, but that doesn't mean it's not true. He's walking with you in the fire. And it, in retrospect, you can say, and you will probably say, that he was with you in that moment. He was close to you, not far away. That's a good moment. As you look back, you'll see that he was with you in the fire. And you might come out with some Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They don't have any singes. They don't have any burns. But you might feel like you're coming out with burns, and you might feel like you're not able to do or to go on. But you need to know that those singes and burns make you who you are. They remind you of the fire. They remind you of the refinement. They are reminding you that God was with you and we'll be with you. So we look forward to those days where he's with you in the fire. This is how the story ends. Nebuchadnezzar is not an idiot. He sees that God is the true God. Next week, we're gonna see Nebuchadnezzar go through his own journey. Uh, a friend of mine who's, uh, you might know him, Brian, somebody, um, he's gonna preach. Brian Berg, y'all heard of him? Yeah, I'm pretty excited. Uh, he's going to be preaching on the next passage where Nebuchadnezzar kind of figures out his story. But I think this is a part of it for Nebuchadnezzar. He sees the, the actions of the one true God. And verse 29, he says, Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego will be cut into pieces. That was kind of a theme of those days, I think. Cut into pieces and their houses be turned to piles of rubble for no other God, no other God can save in this, well, in this way. Amen? That's our God. No other God can save in this way. No other God will walk with you in the fire like our God will. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. As we look at this story, we pray that it would challenge us not just to... Um, to be steadfast and to, be, to persevere, but also remind us of who you are. That you are steadfast, you are, you are faithful. Lord, we thank you for the example that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego show, show us. That even if, even if it doesn't work out the way we want it to, even if we go through trials or struggles, we will still serve you with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our soul. And so as we worship today, we pray that we would continue to see you with us in those moments in the fire. In your name, amen. So the production team and a couple others, we, we gathered together a couple months back and started mapping out the series. And when we got to this week, uh, this specific week, there was a song that really on the nose of, of the topic at hand today that we wanted to introduce to the church. And when we, when we were talking through this specific week and talking through that song, uh, we had decided that we were gonna do it as like a reflection time. So we we're, gonna, we we're gonna play up here on stage. We we're gonna ask you guys to stay seated and, and let you kind of soak in the lyrics. And maybe that is where you are today. Maybe that's what you're supposed to be doing. 
today. Maybe you're currently in a season where it's hard, it's tough. You're in the midst of uh, a struggle where you, you are waiting to identify Jesus in the middle of it. Or maybe you've actually come out of that season and you should respond in celebration because you can look back. It may have been hard. It may have been difficult. You may have walked out with a couple of scars, but you know that Jesus was with you the entire time. And so I'm not gonna dictate how you respond uh, in the middle of this song. Uh, I'm gonna let the spirit do that uh, in you. So if today's a moment where you've gotta sit back and you've gotta listen to and take in the lyrics and you've gotta just pray, maybe you need to be in a, in a moment of weeping and, and crying out to, to God in, in, in prayer, or if it's celebration and you need to stand and you need to celebrate who Jesus is and what he has done in the middle of your trials, um, that's for you. And so I know it's easier to sit back and listen and soak in, um, but do, do what the Spirit is leading you to do in this moment. It's a new song. Uh, the lyrics are gonna be behind me on the screen. There's gonna be a little more happening on the screens as well. Uh, but we invite you uh, to stand with us, sing with us, sit, mourn, weep, uh, soak in, whatever it needs to be for you this morning.
no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come what may in the space between all the things that seen in this reckoning. Wow, praise Jesus. He is so good. God is with us in the fire. He sees us through. Hey, you may be seated. I have a few great next steps for you to take. Uh, if you're new with us, we're so glad that you are here. We have a gift for you out at the Information Center. And if uh, you've been with us for a while or new or any time, and you haven't been to Discover Woodlands yet, please, just go around to the chapel around here directly after the service. We're gonna be hanging out. You can meet the pastors and staff and you can get to know, uh, yeah, just what we're doing around here. So we'd love to invite you to that. We have a baptism service coming up August 18th for those who have said yes to Jesus. And we would invite you to go ahead and get on that Church Center app if you don't have that app and you can sign up today for that. And we have a young adult ministry, YAM, Yammers. We got Yammers in here. Uh, so after 18, so after high school, 18 and older, uh, about 20 something, we have our summer kickoff coming. That'll be not this Monday, but the following Monday, we're gonna have a grill out. We'll invite you to that. It'll be a great time. And time, treasure, and talents. As John told you, we, we have these shirts on today. There's gonna be a bunch of people out there with shirts on. Time, treasure, and talents. One of the ways we give our treasure around here is we give our offering in the boxes in the back, online, or you can receive a text message. You can text and give through your phone. I believe it's if you text 84321. There we go. 84321. And if you want to engage in giving out your time and your talents, and you're not engaged yet. See, around here we love it. If you attend a worship service, you be in a group, or you serve in ministry, we have a church here who loves to serve, not only here, but out beyond in our community. would invite you to hang out, get to know how we're involved. Uh, as well, if you've never served somewhere, you know, and you're just trying to jump in, if, if you 
If it's not a good fit for you in the first three weeks, we can just move you on to another place. No big deal. It's all good. We'll help get you connected in your sweet spot. Just a quick story for you. No matter what your age, old or young, uh, you know, you might be timid, you might not know, but there's a big need in student and children's ministries, especially kids' ministry. And this summer is a great time to check that out. And so would love to uh, encourage you to, to go, go for it. See, this older gentleman, he last served Sunday we had was, was a little timid, but he said, hey, there's a need in kid men. So if I can be used, I'll be used. And so got involved and now just will not miss a Sunday. Loves his fourth grade boys and has changed his world around to be able to invest in them. And it is so amazing. So I encourage you, take that first step. It's really easy. Just talk to someone out there and you can fill out one of these nice cards on the QR card. You can do that online, give information. It's not like you're signing your life away, but just getting more information. Hey, with that said, just want you to leave here knowing that God is with you and you are loved. Be encouraged today. God bless you.